Yes, my name is Lily, and today I want to show you the survival kit in a can. Stay tuned. A lot of survival situations could be avoided if people took some survival items with them. Today I want to show you what belongs into a small survival kit. Stay tuned. The first item that we have here is a steel can and this one here can hold quite a lot of water and in a survival situation it's important that you have some, something to collect water and to boil water. And a steel can like this is sturdy enough to boil water a couple of times and it makes a good casing for our survival kit. So that's the first item that we have. The second item is this wire here. You can make snares or you can just make a handle for the can so that you can you know, hold it over the fire with a stick. That's the first item that goes into the can. Next I have three different kinds of duct tape with me. They are awesome. Uh, you can repair so much things with them. Uh, for example, if something is damaged with your car or yeah, if you need an uh, emergency first aid bandit. There's a ton of things that you can do with duct tape, so that's always good to have. Next we have here a signal mirror. And this is great for signaling, for example, when there's a rescue team searching for you, the helicopter or maybe a ship at the ocean. So it doesn't take up a lot of room. It's just a small mirror and goes to the bottom of the can so that it doesn't, you know, get destroyed by the other items. Next here we have a good compass for navigation. It's not a very big compass, but certainly better than nothing. And it gives you a general direction and you can navigate with it. Next in my kit, I have a very good folding knife. This here is the Victorinox Hunter. It has a locking blade, which is the most important thing when it comes to folders. It also has a saw on it. And you also have this crooked knife here, which you can use for guarding deer, for example. So, yeah, pretty good knife. And every survival kit needs a knife, so it goes right into the can. Another thing that I recommend putting in your survival kit is water purifying tablets, like these ones here. Uh, in general, I don't recommend taking them regularly because you know it's chemistry and it's killing a lot of things and it certainly can harm your body if you drink that regularly but in a survival situation when you can't make a fire for some reason maybe you don't want to give away your position or it's just too wet you can purify your water with the water purification tablets Another important survival item is a flashlight like this one here. Preferably it should be a headlamp so you have both of your hands free when you have to do some work. And yeah, a lot of people are afraid of darkness and a flashlight can give you a little bit more comfort. As an emergency fire making device, I suggest bringing a fire steel with you. A fire steel even works in damp and wet conditions. And I highly suggest that you start practicing with the fire steel because what I have found is that a lot of people can't use the fire steel correctly. If you want to learn how to use a fire steel correctly, I have put a link into the video description below. Here I have a very bulky item, which is a candle. And candles, yeah, are pretty important when it comes to survival kits because they can give you light, they can give you warmth, for example, to warm up your hands and they can help you ignite a fire. Another scenario is that you are having a car accident in winter time and no one can help you and reach you until the next morning. And then you can light a candle inside of the car and then the air gets a little bit warmer. And yeah, candle very important, goes right into the kit. Oh. This here is a whistle that I have bought as a kid. It's one of the loudest whistles that I had. It's by Acme. And yeah, it has a pee in it, which is not good in winter conditions because it's going to freeze, but yeah, it's a really loud whistle. And whistles are great. You can attract the rescue, the search and rescue team. Next in here, I have a tampon, which is great for fire making. This is waterproof, in a waterproof casing. Also, you can use it as first aid, for example, for gunshots. And 
The next thing that I have here is another kind of tinder. This is jute twine and I have used uh, I think beeswax and pine resin and I have melted it up and then I just put the jute twine into the solution and this burns like hell. Here I have a fishing kit. A fishing kit doesn't need to be big, it just needs to contain a couple of hooks, line and weights. I have a couple of different strings here. String is very important when it comes to survival. I have some paracord, you can build shelters with it or make boat drill fires. And I have some smaller string as well. These here are quite tough, they come from the bow industry. These are bow strings. And yeah, you can do everything with string, you know. You can take the small ones to fish or you can attach a arrowhead to a shaft. And yeah, as I said, paracord is good for shelter building and bow drill and a ton of other stuff. In a survival situation, you need a lot of energy and I recommend putting some sugar, in this case dextrose, into your kit because it will give you an energy boost. When I was searching for a clothing um, system, I found this lid here at home and this is just an ordinary tin lid and it fits perfectly over the opening of the tin can, like this. And here I still have a little bit of room left and I have this first aid kit here which consists out of band-aids, different sizes, I have some stereo strips as well and some painkillers which I put on top of the lid like this and then I have this other plastic lid which goes over the top and it seals off the tin can. And if you want to, you can put some duct tape or electrical tape around the lid to make it waterproof. So this is the survival kit in a can and it's actually very useful, a lot of useful items in there. And it doesn't weigh a lot, so you can throw it into your car, uh, you can take it with you into your rucksack when you're hiking for example. Or if you have a boat or an airplane, you can put it in there. So. It's just important that the people take the survival kit with them so that they have it when it comes to a survival situation. I want to thank you for watching. Please don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And if you are interested in what rucksack this is, check out the description in the video. Stay tuned till next time.